and anyone that claims you can have all three is living in a magical place where fairies and pixies exist. Question came in to me saying, I'm studying a NoSQL course and I want to, yeah, hand on heart. I didn't want to go, well, I'm a relational guy. Stop talking to me. The reality is NoSQL is still a data modeling activity, a data technology, and we should know about it even as Oracle database practitioners. I'm studying a NoSQL course and it refers to the limitations due to the CAT theorem. What is that? And I thought this was an interesting topic to talk about because as DBAs, most of us nowadays have to deal with a mixture of technologies. We're dealing with things like relational databases, NoSQL databases, whether they be Oracle or other vendors, etc. We're dealing with multiple technologies now. With a relational database, historically, this is what you've done. You start off with a small system and a small database running on a server. And as your system becomes infinitely more successful because you chose the Oracle database, <laughs> throws in the marketing slide, this is what you do. As it becomes more successful, you get a bigger database and a bigger server. That server might be multiple servers, but it's ultimately a single database and a single shared disk infrastructure, things like Rack. So logically speaking, it is just one database across a single possibly logical node. With NoSQL databases, the metaphor is slightly different. You start off with, for example, just a few small servers. So even at day one, you actually have multiple servers in the mix. And as you get more successful, you actually simply add more and more servers into the mix. NoSQL architectures typically go to hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of small commodity servers. And the challenge obviously that NoSQL vendors had when they were first you know, building their technologies is presenting that as one logical database. But because inherent in NoSQL technology is this concept of lots and lots and lots of nodes, it really means your data has to be partitioned across them. Unlike a rack system, which has the data shared amongst all nodes, NoSQL systems are basically inherently based on the data being separated across nodes. The data is partitioned or sharded. And that's where the CAP theorem came in. Eric Brewer, when he was talking about this concept of systems distributed across multiple nodes, wrote a theory which is when designing distributed web services, there are three properties that are commonly desired. Consistency, availability, and partition tolerance, and you cannot have all three. So let's explore that from the realm of what we mean by databases. Consistency means if you have a database running on multiple nodes, it needs to show all the data the same no matter what node you pick. That's consistent. Availability means if I kill off a node, the other nodes are quite happy to simply keep chugging along, there's no drama there. And partition tolerance means if you lose a node, it doesn't have any impact on the other nodes. And when I say lose a node, it also means if the nodes can't talk to each other. That's what we mean by, when Eric Brewer first put this together, it was about messaging between the nodes. So if you can't talk to the nodes, that doesn't impact your system as well. And his theorem was, you get to pick any two, you don't get all three. So I thought we'd do this as like a, a Venn diagram. So we have availability, partition tolerance, and consistency. And what I thought I'd use is the metaphor of a petrol station, but we can think in terms of a database in terms of this. So the first option we have is you can have partitions and consistency. So in terms of a metaphor, here's my server station. If I have partitions, that means I can have lots of server station. If I want every single petrol station to always show the same price, no matter where it is, which means consistency. I want partitioning and consistency. I want every press service station to show diesel being 108.9. What it means is if I can't get in touch with one of those service stations, they're not picking up the phone. What do I have to do? I have to turn all my service stations off. That's what's meant by partition and consistency. I have multiple nodes, multiple partitions, but I want them all to show the same petrol price, always. What that means is if I can't talk to one of them, I have to shut them all down. I can't have availability if I have partitioning and consistency because I would then lose the consistency if I can't communicate to one of them. They might change the price on me. So partitioning consistency means I can't have guaranteed availability. Then we have this option. This is effectively like your Oracle database. This is consistency and availability. What I do there is I have one service station and I absolutely do my darndest to make sure that nothing can interfere with its operation. So I make sure it's on a big highway so people can come in and come out. I make sure it's on multiple electrical feeds so I never lose the power. I make sure I have huge reserve tanks so I never run out of petrol. I do everything I can to make that one service station always available. 
because I can't have more than one. The beauty of that is it's almost always available because I've done that effort. And that's what, for example, what Rack is. Rack is having multiple servers act as one without any kind of data partitioning. The data is shared across all servers. It's an availability concept to maximize the availability, but also because there's one I'm guaranteed to have consistency. The downside is I don't get to have partitions. I don't get to have the data separated across multiple nodes because I can't have partitions if I want to guarantee availability and consistency. And then we have this one, which is partitioning and availability. So I want to have multiple service stations and I want them always to be available. So if I'm going to do that, I sacrifice consistency. What it means is one service station might show diesel at 109.3, another service station might show diesel at 108.9. And the reason this might happen is I might not be able to talk between them. So partition is, remember, is partition tolerance. If I can't communicate between these two, I can never really know if they're actually showing the same price. I've got partition tolerance, I've got availability, but I've sacrificed consistency. And in these situations, what I'm hoping for is eventually the phone line will come back or you know, the network comes back and I'll be able to bring them into alignment. And this is what we do with NoSQL systems often. A real life example of partition tolerance and availability is Twitter. Uh, recently, I tweeted out that I was heading to Portugal. That was on my browser. I fire up my phone and there's no evidence of that tweet. Eventually, it will appear. That's what we mean by a inconsistent system. Twitter is much more concerned about being available all the time and being tolerant to partition failures or networking failures than it is to have the data being consistent across all nodes. It's hoping that eventually it'll all just sort itself out. That leaves us onto this third option, which is can you have all three? And anyone that claims you can have all three is living in a magical place where fairies and pixies exist. But we'll talk about theoretical concept of having all three available uh, even though Eric Brewer's theorem says it's impossible. So in the NoSQL world, as I said, we always have lots of nodes. So partitioning tolerance is a mandatory. You've got to have tolerance to partition failures because inherently in most NoSQL architectures, you've got hundreds or thousands of nodes and the data is partitioned across them. So you must choose, you have to lose one. You can choose availability, which is what most of them do, or you can choose consistency. Almost they all chose availability. And that moves us from what we call acid to base. And most of us, I'm sure, are familiar with that the ACID principle, which all relational databases that claim to be anything have, the atomicity, consistency, isolation, and duration. NoSQL systems are generally more concerned about base, which is really just a play on words to make it the opposite of ACID, because really it's actually only three things. It's basically available, which means it's always going to be there. It's soft state, and soft state really means stuff happens in the background without your knowledge. And what that means is I might make a change to a data on one node, and that's all I did as a user or as an application. But behind the scenes, that data will be passed across other nodes to become effectively consistent over time, which leads to the E, which is eventually consistent. So we have ACID versus BASE. ACID generally being the relational database theory, BASE being the more typical thing of NoSQL. Database dinosaurs like myself who have been brought up in the relational world, that concept of seeing inconsistent data and never being absolutely sure what you're seeing is correct you know, it sounds to me like horrific, but it actually can be really successful, even for things like financials, which most people think financial systems, it's got to be acid. You know, things like Twitter and stuff like that, they can afford to be um, not consistent. But for example, if you go to Amazon, and, and I'm making this up, or Walmart or any online retailer, what's more important to them is not that you do a sale. What's most important to them is that you do lots of sales, therefore you have customer loyalty. So if I go to Walmart or Amazon or eBay or someone and I want to buy a phone, in an inconsistent system, I could log on to a node and see that the inventory for phones is one. So I go, fantastic, there's one phone left, I'm going to buy it, I add it to my shopping cart. Because these systems are eventually consistent, what might happen is in the background, actually, the inventory was actually zero. That's a delayed update coming through to your node. So by the time I go to check out, the inventory is actually minus one. There is no phone to give me. Now you might be thinking that's a disaster in terms of data corruption, but it's not. But for a big retailer, what's more important is that they keep you as a customer because you'll do more sales in future. So what do they do? They simply cancel your order and they'll give you a credit. They'll do something, they'll throw you a bone, so to speak. They might say, yep, I'm sorry, your order couldn't be processed due to some, you know, some sort of fault. Here's a $10 credit for your next purchase. Most of us go, ah, oh, yeah, that sucks, but guess what? we stay customers. So even for financial transactions, if you architect your applications knowing 
that there will be inconsistencies over time, these kind of models can actually still be really successful because your business goals uh, be accurate most of the time and be able to recover if you're inaccurate and still reward the person doing the transaction. Don't get me wrong, these systems can be unsuccessful as well. Uh, this is one of, the, one of my favorite quotes in terms of inconsistent systems. When Facebook used to do messaging, they used their bespoke NoSQL database called Cassandra. And when they actually launched Messenger, I think it was back in 2010, they said, you know, this eventual consistency with messaging just sucks. And so they actually did some changes and actually went to a more consistency-based model to do messaging. As I said, you know, you choose the architecture that best suits you, but that's the CAP theorem in its session. And when we get to modern CAP systems, if you think about what's happening now in the world of networking, one of the big pushes in our Gen 2 cloud is the incredible robustness and speed of our networks. And I'm not putting this on a marketing slide here. You know, you see a lot of this information from the Amazons and Googles and Azures of the world. They're all putting a lot of focus on the speed and quality of their global networks, Oracle obviously included. If you never lose the network, well, maybe the cap theorem is starting to become a little bit out of date because if you never ever lose the network, you're more into this kind of realm. And that's why we start seeing these databases now that run globally and yet still claim to be all the principles of ACID. And, and I think this is probably one of the, the future directions now as networks get just ridiculously good, the cap theorem becomes that little bit obsolete. And that's a good thing for all of us. We'll end up having systems which are hugely scalable and yet still guarantee us the quality of data and availability. So that's pretty cool.